In today's video, I want to talk about why living from the ego is holding us back from living our greatest life ever, what we need to know about the ego, and how to move over from ego mind to heart mind in order to make the best decisions we possibly can while on earth in this time. Hello my babies and welcome back to my channel. If you're new, I'm Leora Alexandra. Welcome to the baby elephant community. On this channel we talk about the law of attraction, spirituality, self-development, and so much more. Today I'm in beautiful Maui and I had this urge to make this video because of a book that I've been reading, The Untethered Soul. It's a really good book and it kind of inspired this video topic for today. Now we've talked about ego versus mind before, but I feel like I have some new insights that I'd like to really kind of hammer into you so that you can know exactly how to live from your heart after this video and why you should. Why it's so important for us to distinguish our thoughts from egoic thoughts and heartfelt thoughts. This is not just a spiritual concept. This is a very physical concept that you should really take on in your life in order to have better relationships with people, better connections with people, a much better relationship with yourself, which is most important of all. It will help you to make better decisions in your life about the way that you want to live your life, your career, the way that you eat, the way that you work out, you exercise, the way that you live your life and your connections with everything in your life. So this is a concept that will help us on a very three-dimensional level, but will also help us to transcend our three-dimensional thinking to become beings of higher consciousness, to have our consciousness and our awareness expanded. So the first thing I want to do is kind of talk about how we can understand what our ego is because you know there's all this there's a lot of talk about the ego in psychology and psychiat psychiatry psychiatry I will remind you that English is my second language. And sometimes it's kind of hard to perceive what it actually means. So the ego, the way that we can identify it is to start thinking about who are, is thinking in your mind. Whose thoughts are going through your mind? If you're hearing the thoughts, who's having the thoughts? Who's the speaker? Who's the orator? You are not your thoughts. We identify with the thoughts and that's how we identify with the ego. The thoughts that we have, the emotions that we have, these are things that we are actually hearing and that we are aware of. We are not them. So you are not depressed. You are aware of depressed emotions and thoughts. You are not anxious or jealous or angry. Those are emotions and thoughts that come from the ego. What you can be and experience and want to experience more of is joy, happiness, bliss, love, unconditional love, those are emotions that are connected to the heart mind instead of the ego mind. They don't come from a fear-based mentality. And our thoughts and feelings that come that feel good, those are innate within us. Those are natural to us. It feels good because it's right. And it's not that it temporarily feels good. You know how we have temporary uh, ways to receive pleasure. That's not the same thing. It's an elongated, long form of happiness and pleasure. So the ego is the voice in your head. It's created out of necessity. It was created originally out of necessity to get us out of danger. It has a survival, primal, fear-based mentality. It is always trying to protect us from something to the point of being completely irrational. The ego fills our mind, our heart minds, up with thoughts that are not our own. In truth, the ego exists for one purpose only, to save and then replay pictures of the past, memories from the past that the ego believes will help you to survive. And when I say survive, I'm not saying you know, fend for your life to continue to live. I'm saying survive in social situations as well. Survive in your everyday life. This is a mentality and a concept that is completely unnecessary and honestly melodramatic. The ego is super dramatic. So when you have thoughts that come up in your head, like for example, let's say you want to ask somebody out on a date or reach out to somebody, but you have all these thoughts that are like, oh no, he or she will not be interested in me. Remember what happened last time you put yourself out there? That's the ego trying to protect you from being rejected. But is that the way that we want to live our lives? Constantly in fear? 
when we listen to the ego, we make the wrong decision most of the time. I would say 85% of the time listening to our ego, our egoic minds and thoughts, leads us to making the wrong decision. I found that whenever I make my decision from the heart, it never leads me astray. Living in survival means constantly living in fear, which is not living at all. It's just surviving. And we don't want to survive. We don't want to simply survive. We want to thrive. It is our birthright to thrive. That is why we are here to experience, to experience contrast for sure, but through it all to thrive, to end up in a place where life is just joyful, blissful where we can enjoy this world like we would enjoy heaven. So because the ego is so afraid of rejection, the ego will steer you, it'll replay all those memories and all those feelings you had in your life in the past where you may have been rejected. So it stops you from being fearless and from going after what you desire, whether it be a job, um, a person, a relationship, whatever it is that you desire, it stops you from doing that because the ego wants to be certain. It wants to know, I'm safe here. I'm on this little island, it's safe here. If I swim over here, sure, there might be a huge island here with all my wishes and all my desires, but swimming over there might be dangerous. I might, my survival instincts are telling me to stop, to not go over this, so we stay on the island. That is what living in the ego forces us to do. It keeps us on this island. So I think that it's pretty obvious why we need to stop listening to our ego and why we need to start living through the heart. But to reiterate the other reasons why we got to stop listening from our ego, like I was saying, the ego is melodramatic. So if you want to be your more, most peaceful, relaxed, confident, secure, loving self, you're going to move your life from egoic living to heartfelt living. That is just how it works. I've experienced this shift myself and I'm working on it every day. It's like a muscle that I'm building and practicing and it gets easier and more natural every day. But life is so much more fulfilling now, more meaningful. I can sit with a friend and have a conversation for hours that fulfills us both because it's all, it's all coming from the, the heart. I can you know, turn down a business proposal or turn somebody down before I was in a relationship or I can say no with love. I'm living to the highest potential or I am in the process of getting there. You know, we're all on a journey. I'm not in any way saying I've gotten there, but it's so fun and so fulfilling to be on this journey where I'm living from my heart. And I know that day to night and in my sleep state, I'm always going to make the decision that comes from the heart because that's always been the correct decision for me. I've noticed it time and time again. It's just the right thing to do over and over again for myself and for others. So the ego doesn't make the best decisions. Whenever we're making fear-based decisions, they're just going to be holding us back instead of letting us live to our fullest potential. The ego also brings you down like in the example I shared with you. It's going to stop you from potentially reaching that island of fulfillment. It's going to stop you from new experiences because it's so much safer to stay where you've stayed. We're too scared to go anywhere else, to experience anything else. And that's when we're staying in this stagnant space, that's when you know you're at a place of fear. You're at a place of ego. The ego also creates a lot of negative self-talk that is on constant replay in our mind. You're not good enough for that. Why would you apply for this high paying job when you don't have the experience? Why would you do this? Why would you go there? You can't afford that. You don't look good enough for that. You can't hang out with those people. You can't have that experience. It's constantly replaying these negative conversations in your head. But these are not your thoughts. These are the thoughts of your roommate, as is said in the untethered soul. Your roommate is constantly talking, constantly telling you, stopping you from moving forward and living the greatest life, constantly stopping you from growth, from expansion. The ego is also far too serious. It makes us take ourselves so seriously, which makes this short time we have on this physical incarnation much less enjoyable. We aren't really meant to be all that serious. There are definitely times to be serious and to you know, take things seriously, but mostly things should be joyful. Work should be fun. Having been with other people should be enjoyable. Your life is meant to be filled with happiness, filled with play. Your life is meant to be light. 
And you can find that lightness no matter what your situation is. I know that people have various situations. I know that people might be super sick or might be dealing with mental conditions like I was. I've had mental disorders. I've had physical disorders. I've been very sick in the past. Thankfully, not sick to the point where my life is, at, is in danger, but I've struggled with certain things. Unless I guess you consider depression and you know deep clinical depression as life-threatening, which it is. So I guess it would be, but you know what I mean. But what does egoic, serious living help when we have these disorders or these bad financial situations or mental things or whatever that's going on with us? Does it help us? Does it alleviate the pain, alleviate the situation to be super serious about it, to be super dramatic about it, to be super concerned and anxious and thinking about the past and worried about the future? Does it help us? It doesn't. But does being lighter help? Being lighter can help any situation that you're in. Moving from the ego to the heart can heal you. It can process and speed up the pain that you're going through to get you over to healing. I truly believe that learning to live from my heart rather than from my ego has contributed to my diminishing anxiety and depression. Understanding that my thoughts, the thoughts that run through my mind all day long are not my own, but that I am aware of them and that I can perceive them gave me a way to handle the anxiety and the depression. When the suicidal thoughts came up, I was able to move myself and distance myself away from them and to be like, oh, these are not my thoughts. These are my roommate's thoughts. Maybe I can comfort my roommate until we feel better. And I do that and I've done that. And those thoughts became less and less until they completely diminished. So like I was saying, these thoughts, the ego living makes us a slave to our thoughts. So our ego is always there, but there are certain things that trigger the ego even more. For example, when we feel unsafe in social situations, when we feel like we might be put on the spot or embarrassed, our ego steps up to bat. When, whenever we are in defense, whenever we have this desire to be right, to be right in the situation, these are forms of survival. Like I was saying earlier, it's social survival rather than survival for our life for our existence. These are situations that trigger the ego. And because these situations trigger the ego, they are also the best times to become an observer and to deal with that ego reactive mind. So instead of running from situations that trigger the ego, just know that there are these certain circumstances where the ego is highly activated and highly in control and become aware of them and use those situations as kind of like a gym. You know how we go to work out to improve our body. This improves our moving our thoughts from our egoic mind thoughts to our heart mind thoughts. Use those situations where you might become defensive or where you feel your emotions rising as a way to detach from those feelings, to detach from the thoughts and to realize, oh, these are my roommate's thoughts, my mind roommate's thoughts. These are not my own thoughts. How will I react? I, who comes from the heart, I, who is connected to God and to source and to all that is good and all that is unconditionally loving and compassionate. How can I react and deal with the situation and control the situation really, which is not really a form of control, but more of um, letting go of resistance and allowing, through my heart instead of from my temperamental ego. Another way that our egos are triggered, and I feel like I have to mention this because I don't know if I've heard this in many other ways, in many other videos, is our egos are triggered by things, external stimuli such as drugs and alcohol. I remember one of the last times I ever got really drunk because you guys know that I've had this thing with alcohol where I love to drink and I would get drunk and make bad decisions and I've had to really let go of that in order to transcend and to become who I am, who have always been meant to be. I had to let go of the alcohol. And I realize now, now that I'm more spiritually aware and my consciousness has expanded, I realize that when I would drink, my heart self, who I really am would go to sleep and my ego would step up to bat. And the reason why it does that is to protect me. It's a survival mechanism. 
It does it out of necessity. And when we drink or do drugs and we put ourselves to sleep, our ego must step up because it's there to protect us even though it does it in the wrong way. So it's not that being drunk is like uh, drunken thoughts are true, your drunk thoughts are true thoughts or whatever. It's more that it's the ego thoughts, the things that come from fear-based, a desperate desire for validation that comes out of us when we are drunk. So I remember one of the last times I was drunk, I dealt with something like that. And I really was so spiritually aware that I realized this is not me. The next day when I kind of snapped out of it, I'm like, that wasn't me. When I'm drunk, when my ego's up to bat, I'm distrustful of people. I look at the worst in people. I create situations that are not even real. I create these negative situations and I react in such a reactive, violent way that is not me, that is not true to myself. So if you struggle with drinking and if you struggle with being an egoic person, understand that maybe drinking less or not getting drunk at the very least will help you to keep that in check. So that is one thing that you should definitely do if you want to start to live from a, mi- a heartfelt space instead of a um, mind egoic place state. Other things that I want you to do is to be grateful to your ego. Don't try to kill it and don't threaten it because you know the ego now. It's in survival mode. If it thinks it's being threatened, it's going to cause your life to spin out of control. And that's what happens to a lot of people. That's why they have dark night of the soul where the ego is killed off basically, but it's really, really violent and it doesn't necessarily have to be like that. As long as we become an observer of our thoughts, observer of our ego, we don't have to be so violent and kill off a part of ourselves that came out of necessity, a part of ourselves that wants to protect us. So just be grateful to the ego, but also realize that you are not these thoughts. You are not these egoic mind thoughts. And so when they come up, kind of calm your ego down. Like, thank you so much for trying to protect us, but I'm going to take it from here. I got us. I'm going to protect you now and return back to the heart. I've done that over and over again. And I find that my ego doesn't feel like it needs to step up to play anymore. It doesn't need to step up to bat because I've got this. I've got us. Does that make sense? So instead of wanting to kill our egos, we become the ultimate observers instead. Observe your thoughts when you're alone. Observe your thoughts in social situations. And don't be so quick to react. Don't jump to react. This is a process, but this process will move you out of the autopilot mind and into mindfulness. Life will become more meaningful and more intentional because you're not living in autopilot, letting the ego choose for you. Instead, you're becoming you, more of yourself who is in your heart and making decisions out of your heart, thereby becoming more mindful, more present. You start to live a more fulfilling life this way. This will also cause you not to take yourself or your thoughts so seriously and things will just be more playful and more joyful. Remember that this world is kind of like a spiritual training ground and every moment gives us an opportunity to transcend and to become better versions of ourselves until we feel like we are just truly ourselves, truly the self that is connected to God at the highest level and we can be happy more often than not. Remember that the mind that we always talk about is here, not here. And love is always going to be the highest vibration and making compassionate thoughts from your heart is always going to lead you the right way. I was lost in the jungle the other day. I used to be terrified of things like that. My fear came up because I saw a wild boar and I was like, oh my God, there's a baby wild boar here. If there's a baby, there has to be a mama and she's going to be, be pissed that we're in their territory. And I started to see my ego spiral out of control and it was all fear-based survival thoughts which you know were appropriate in this moment because it was kind of for my life i can go about this from fear and run and not know where i'm going or i can return to my heart and listen to my intuition i did that and i got us out of the forest intuitively knowing where to go and we were safe and nothing happened so this could actually help in survival based situations for your life, as well as social survival, as well as just day to day getting by. Because we don't want to get by, we want to thrive. I think that's enough for this video. If you guys enjoyed it, I really enjoyed making it. I love shooting here in Maui. I might have to move here. I love you. Thank you for spending some of your time with me here today. And until next time, as always, keep your vibrations way, way, way up. Bye.